you can be overcautious very easily. You can be administratively overcautious. We do have in, in the early days of, of GCI, there was virtually no administrative overhead. There was a little bit, but I would uh, it would be t so. Here's a, here's something that could never happen again. Um, I had payments tied to report periods, and. One of them, those deadlines would be coming up, and so I would notify the PI that he was due for an annual report, and um, he had a payment coming up. I was tied to it, and we would sign off on the report, and he'd get his payment. And I'd put a request in for the payment early, and it would come to my office, you know, and I'd have a $200,000 check that I would simply put in his folder and then waited for the report. That would never happen today. I would never see the money. I would never have any, inf I would not be negotiating um, contracts. I would not be, you know, talking to the principal investigators at, a, at, a, at that fundamental of a level. It was more like the Wild West uh, in some respects. You'd, you could uh, rub elbows with these partners and you know, have a drink with them. And we did that occasionally too. And then go to the lab and say, you know, how much will this, this cost, this work, and let's do it. Let's just do it and then come back and administration at GCI and they get a trust was completely simpatico with that. They had absolute trust in, in Frank and our department. They had, they had really good trust in almost anything. And maybe it was because administration hadn't gotten to the point where it was rule, where it, it had been incarcerated in its own rule structure. Yeah. There was a, there was a, I think it was was a Ford Motor, the CEO of Ford Motor. It was a woman, or Chrysler. I'm not, I'm not sure. She came in. She saw that they had like a 26-page dress code, mm -hmm. and she she took the dress code and just trashed it and replaced it with dress appropriately, and she got this panicky email from one of her people, right, right, her middle managers, and he said, I can't, I can't deal with dress appropriately. What, what do you mean? And, and she said, uh, let me see here. I trust you with a $4 million annual budget, and I can't trust you to dress appropriately. And it, it was used as an example of, you know, how many hundreds of pages did a, did a century old company have that encumbered its ability to move quickly? Yeah. And when you have micromanaging going on in a research institute, that's deadly. Yeah. And you can have micromanaging at different levels. You have micromanaging at the level of someone in a high position who once did research or who once managed research more personally than they do now. And that can be devastating. Science is based on taking risks, and not all risks pay off. Right. And in science, you know, some risks, you know, we tried to build a um, um, equivalent to the CERN super collider, and we ended up with a big hole at some point. Right. Uh, you know, that <laughs> this really comes with the territory. Yeah. You know, and you, you do all of the the homework you can. You know, one of the things that they're not considering is where. And I think you've pointed it out, uh, and that is where these kinds of attributes pop up in the greater out, outdoor conservation or outside conservation world and makes an impression on leadership. You know, the, only the Getty would do that, and only the, I mean, and say that enviably, mm. or your comment about a mini NSF. Right. This has value. Few institutions really grapple with the metrics to quantify it. Mm. And that's really, a, a, to those who understand it, it doesn't need quantification, but it would certainly be nice to have it for those less flexible or less fleet of foot to, to uh, respond to opportunism. Opportunism is not necessarily a bad term. Right. It's seeing something about ready to fall from the tree, and if you get, catch it, there might be something really wonderful there, mm -hmm. and you think the probability of that, of that having something wonderful in that fruit is, is, is better than 68.3%, so go for it. Right. Right. <laughs>
right. go for it. We'll learn something about it, and maybe it's worth simply a part of a review project. We, we pull it to people's attention, and we talk about it, and, and uh, bec no one has to duplicate or you know, reproduce some of that, or maybe they ch may choose to go that same direction and, and take it a slightly different way and, and advance conservation um, in so doing. But uh, how do you, what kind of metric do you use on influence and, and changing other people's thought processes indirectly? 